Hello learners, welcome to NIOS studio. Myself, Dr. K. Thiyagu, Assistant Professor, Department of Education, Central University of Kerala. Today, we are going to talk about a very important topic, inductive and deductive method. Mathematics teachers use variety of methods and techniques in his daily classroom teaching in order to make his teaching more interactive and operative. Teacher and students interact with each other within the school. So, to develop this interaction, an educator uses new teaching substantial procedures, strategies and approaches of teaching to make learning pertinent and beneficial. Till now, so many methods and techniques has been launched, but a mathematics teacher select only most relevant one keeping in view the topic, content, need of the learner. Inductive method is advocated by Pestology and Francis Bagan. This method proceeds from particular to general, concrete to abstract, then known to unknown, simple to complex. Induction is a form of reasoning in which a general law or principle is derived from a study of particular object or specific processes. Induction is based on the logic that if something is true for particular case and is further true for the reasonable adequate number of cases, then it is true for all such cases. It is the method of constructing a formula with the help of a sufficient number of concrete examples. Induction means to provide a universal truth by showing that if it is true for particular case, it is true for all such cases. The children follow the subject matter with great interest and understanding. This method is more useful in arithmetic teaching and learning. Now we are going to talk about the inductive method steps one by one. Step number one, appearance or presentation of example. Here teachers shows lot of example of same type and solution of all those specific examples are obtained with the help of the students. Step number two, observation or reflection. After solving so many specific example, the student detect and observe these and try to reach some conclusions. Then step number three, generalization or simplifications. Based on the observation, the educator and the students resolve some common rules, laws, formula or principle by logical mutual discussion. Then step number four, testing and verification or authentication. Here the student test and prove the law, rule or principle with the help of other suitable specific examples. Now we will go some of the examples of inductive method. See in this case, now the general case square of an add number is add. I want to prove this general case by using the particular examples. See in this screen, here the particular case 1, 1 square is equal to 1, case number 2, 3 square is equal to 9, case number 3, 5 square equal to 25. Here 1, 3, 5, these numbers are in the add number. Then squaring these numbers, that answer also it comes as an add. From the case 1, 2, 3, we have to make a general conclusion like square of an add number is add. In the same way, come to the case 4, 5, 6. Here 2 square equal to 4, 4 square equal to 16, 6 square equal to 36. These are the particular examples, particular cases. From this, we have to come conclusion. Here the 2, 4, 6, these numbers are even number. Then square these numbers, we will get once again the even number only. So from case 4 to 6, we have to make generalization. Square of an even number is even. The same way, another example I am going to be highlight to you. Here, the general concept sum up to add number is even. I am going to be explain how it will be proved by using the inductive method. See in the case 1, 1 plus 1 equal to 2, case 2, 1 plus 3 equal to 4, case 3, 1 plus 5 equal to 6, case 4, 3 plus 5 equal to 8. Here, all the numbers I used for addition, 1 plus 1, 1 plus 3, 1 plus 5 and 3 plus 5, all the numbers are add number. Then finally, what that output it comes? Every number it comes as an even number. It seems that sum of two add numbers is even. So now I conclude this particular statement sum of two add number is even by using the particular cases. Now I am going to be uh, explain the merits of the inductive method. It enhances the self-confidence, 
It promotes a meaningful learning. It enhances the scientific methods of learning. It develops a scientific attitude to the students. It develops the habit of intelligent hard work to the students. Does not burden the mind, this method. Formula becomes easy to remember through this method. It's a method, it's suitable in the beginning stages for the preschool, uh, pre-primary, as well as the elementary. Then here I'm going to highlight some of the demerits of inductive method. It's not suitable for all topics. It may be a time-consuming method and laborious method. The application is limited to very few topics. It's not suitable for higher classes. Then inductive reason is not absolutely conclusive because the generalization made with the help of a few specific example may not hold good in all cases. Now, I am going to highlight the application of the inductive method. This method most suitable were rules are to be formulated, definition are to be formulated, formula are to be derived, generalization or law are to be arrived at, directive approach or methods. This method proceeds from general to particular, abstract to concrete, unknown to known, and con complex to simple. This is a reverse method of the inductive method. This method, a pre-constructed formula or principles be told to the students, and they are asked to solve the different relevant problems with the help of the yearly formula. So, in this method, first we give the relevant formula, principles, and ideas to the students and explain further its application of the formula to problems. The students in your class come to understand how the formula can be used or applied. Now, I'm going to talk about to you the steps of deductive method. The step number one, clear recognition of the problem. Here the student should understand the problem deeply. Step number two, Search for the tentative hypothesis. Based on the problem, the students can understand, they can find out some of the hypothesis, tentative hypothesis based on this problem. Then step number three, formulating the tentative hypothesis. So based on the problem's circumstance, we have to find the correct and choosing the perfect formula. Then step number four, solving the problem. Then after finding the formula, we can apply the formula into the sum and find the solution. This is step number four. Then final step, verification of the results. After applying the formula to the problem, we will get some findings. Here, our role is to be verify whether the results is correct or not. Then here, I am highlighting the examples of deductive method. See, deductive method, I already mentioned that it moves from general to particular. Here we can take directly as a uh, general formula. See, in this case, I want to prove a square is into a power 10 is equal to what? So I can be found this one. From this, we know the formula, law of indices, it's known as a power m into a power n is equal to a power of m plus n. We already know this general formula. Then we can apply this formula in this particular problem a power 2 into a power 10 is equal to a power 2 plus 10 is equal to a power 12. Here m equal to 2, n equal to 10. So in this manner, we can prove means its, come, its name is called as a directive method. Come to the case of second example. Here I want to prove 1 not 2 the whole square, the value. Here we already know that formula a plus b the whole square equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab. Therefore, I can divide the 1 or 2 in such a way, 100 plus 2, the whole square is called 100 square plus 2 square plus 2 into 100 into 2. In this case, A equal to 100, B equal to 2. Then finally, we get that answer, 10,000 plus 4 plus 400 equal to 10,404. We can also multiply 1 or 2 with itself to get the same results for verification of the correctness of the earlier results. So, this is an example of the directive method. Now I am going to highlight the merits of directive method. It is short and time saving method. It is suitable for all the mathematical topics and concepts. It is useful for revision and drill work. It enhances the power of learner's memory. It provides sufficient practice in the applications of various mathematical formula and rules. It enhances the speed and the efficiency of solving the problem to the students. 
these are the some of the demerits of deductive method. It is not psychological method, it is not easy to understand, it is not suitable for beginners, it encourage, encourages cramming, it more emphasize on memory based only. Here the students are only the passive listeners, not in active listeners here. Now I am going to highlight the applications of the deductive method. It is more suitable for giving the practice to the students. It is very much useful for fixation and retention. It provides the adequate drill and practices. Now there can be no induction without deduction and no deduction without induction. Here I am going to be merge two things, inductive plus deductive approach is come as an inductive deductive approach. Hence a combination of both inductive and deductive approach is known as a inductive deductive approach is most effective for realizing the desired goals. Now I am going to sum up what are things we discussed in previous. Inductive approach, it proceeds from particular to concrete, particular example to general then simple to complex, then deductive approach is vice versa. In deductive approach general to particular, then complex to simple. Here in the inductive approach is very much useful for to find the solution, find the generalized formula by using the particular examples. But in the deductive approach it is very much useful for applying the general formula and finding the particular cases. So hence a combination of both inductive and deductive approach is known as an inductive deductive approach is most effective for realizing the desired goals. I hope that you may be use this kind of methods in your classroom practices. Try to be incorporate these are the learning uh, teaching methods in your learning as well as the teaching strategies. Then you can highlight to your students if you are going to be solve any problem or you are going to be generalized any um, loss, try to be tell exactly what the method you are going to be used for particular cases. I hope you may understand the method of inductive as well as the deductive. Thank you. Jai Bharat.